I have a sister who is in training to be an astronaut. In fact, most of my sisters are quite exceptional and I'm going to show you a picture of them right now. Megan here, she is an astronaut in training. I'm the oldest and I run a martial arts school here in Wollongong. The 22 and a half thousand people that applied for an astronaut position and Megan got chosen. I am not in the least surprised at that. Megan Christian. You know, I've always known that Megan is an exceptional person. Um, you know, she's won so many academic awards that that's obvious, but that's only one part of Megan. My family is is amazing. They're, they're all really proud of me. I, I think they, they probably uh, believed in me more than I believe in myself. So maybe they weren't as shocked and surprised as I was. Uh, but yeah, they've, they've been wonderfully supportive. When I applied uh, to the European Space Agency, 17 of us were selected in the end. So it was a, it was a tough process. It was, it was long. It took about 18 months and there was a lot of waiting, anxious waiting in between all the different phases. The basic requirements are that you have a degree, at least a master's degree in science, uh, engineering or medicine, or you're a test pilot. The panel interview was very tough. So we had questions that I might have expected, like uh, what situations that might occur on, on the ISS, uh, and questions that journalists might ask. But this one particular question was, uh, I had to pretend that the panel was a nine-year-old child and they had just seen a video of the Challenger Space Shuttle disaster that blew up. 25th Space Shuttle mission and it has cleared the tower. The vehicle has exploded. Flight director confirms that we are uh, looking at uh, checking with the recovery forces to see uh, what can be done at this point. Seven astronauts were killed when the Challenger blew up soon after launch in January and the verdict has just been given on what went wrong. Uh, and so this child asks me, why would I want to go to space if I knew I might not come back? And that's a tough question to answer for an adult, let alone for a child, and frame it in a way that's understandable. I arrived in, in Wollongong when I was five years old from the UK, but most of my memories start from about when I got to Australia. And, uh, you know, I, I, I loved my school, had a great time at school. Uh, I loved being close-ish to the beach. It's something that I do miss now. And uh, I really enjoyed the kind of extracurricular activities that I got involved in as well. So I did a lot of uh, martial arts, for example. There's began holding this little teddy bear that she had as a mascot. And that's on a um, Hapkido training camp that we went on down in Threadbone. McGann's in the foreground there, and that's... I did martial arts for about eight years while I was at, uh, at school. And I started at White Belt and worked my way through to a Black Belt. And that was in Hapkido. Then I started another martial art and ended up at Red Belt. Didn't quite get to Black Belt before I moved to Sydney. And actually just last year I started Taekwondo. So um, it, it's something I enjoy very much. McGann's martial arts training, I think will help her as an astronaut. She trained a really long time ago, but it's something that stays with you, as I was saying. I think that what will uh, help her a lot is that she has really good control of her body. Hi everyone, coming to you from the countryside south of Bonn, having a lovely weekend hike after my first week of astronaut reserve training. The European Astronaut Centre is in Cologne on the DLR campus, which is the German Aerospace Centre. So what is ART, Astronaut Reserve Training? I've just finished the first block of the Astronaut Reserve Training. There'll be two more blocks at least after this, each of two months. And this, in this block, we did a lot of what's called human behaviour and performance training, which is learning about leadership skills and working in a team, um, situational awareness, and kind of putting all these things together so that we can work well when we're on a space mission with the international team that will be involved. Some of the other courses we've done have been uh, biology. Uh, so I'm quite used to sciences, but I haven't done a lot of biology. So that was really interesting, both uh, theoretical and, and in the lab. And we've had some, uh, our first diving. So in the neutral buoyancy facility that we have here at the European Astronaut Centre, there's a 10 metre deep pool. And that's where 
astronaut candidates get their first um, training for familiarizing themselves with what it's like to do an extravehicular activity or a spacewalk. Uh, so we got our certification in this pool so that we can go on and do further training. Uh, and with this certification, we're also able to dive in the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory in Houston, which is even bigger. It's 12 meters deep and it's huge. It's got a full mock-up of the ISS inside and that's where all the spacewalk training happens. So that was a really exciting moment to have my first dive in the NBF. It's so aspirational. Everybody at some point in their life, I'm sure, has thought about being an astronaut. Most people as a like, wow, isn't that crazy that people are astronauts and leave not I wonder if I could be one, let alone going through the process of actually becoming one. During my time at the National Research Council of Italy, uh, I found out that they have polar research institutes there and they actually look for somebody, they look for people to go and spend the winter at Concordia Station. Concordia Station is also known as White Mars. And uh, that's because it's the closest thing we have on Earth to what it would be like to go on a mission uh, to Mars. I found myself heading to Antarctica to what was an absolutely life-changing experience. The, the, the physical conditions were tough, yes. We got down to minus 104 degrees Celsius wind chill. I was working outside every day. We had 100 days where the sun didn't rise. But I think the, the mental challenge was, was the bigger one and working in a small international team. There were just 13 of us. We were isolated. There was no way of uh, being evacuated if something happened. And these experiences and what that taught me about myself definitely then helped me when I later applied to become an astronaut. One of the tasks that I had when I was in Antarctica, I was in charge of atmospheric physics and meteorology. And there was this tower where we had a bunch of meteorological instruments, about 45 meters high, but one kilometer away from the base. And we're at high altitude, it's 3,200 meters. So it's, it's actually quite hard work just to, to walk out there, uh, dig up the snow to get into the shelter underneath and then put all the gear on and, and climb up the tower. So it was probably the toughest part of the week, but it was also the best part of the week because my colleague and I that went there, we would use that time to let our eyes adjust to the darkness. We would turn our headlamps off. And if it was a moonless day, we would be able to see so many stars. And they were so bright that we could actually see our shadow in the light of the Milky Way. That sense of exploring is very much a part of who she is. And uh, she was, she told us when she was in Antarctica, the station that she stayed at, Concordia, is the most remote of the stations. And it's really high above sea level. It takes seven to 10 days, depending on what the weather is doing to get from the coast of Antarctica into Concordia Station on the Overland Traverse. And she was there one time looking up at the, the sky, thinking, I'm closer right now to the people on the International Space Station than I am to anyone else on Earth. And that's kind of a phenomenal realization to have. And I think that being that isolated, that remote, it must have made it think, well, how much more remote can space be? I'm already so removed from people and I'm having a great time and I'm adventuring and seeing things. What more is there to see? She wants to see more. I would like to go to the, to the moon, to Mars, to the International Space Station. I would be happy with any of these and I would be particularly interested uh, in actually going to another star system and seeing exoplanets and whether there is life el elsewhere in the universe or are there at least ha other habitable planets. These are all dreams, of course. At first, I'd like to get to the International Space Station. <laughs>